We're going to a different clip, and this one by Alex O'Connor. We're sometimes told that God has morally sufficient reason to allow suffering to exist. Indeed, if God is good, then he must have such sufficient reason. Perhaps suffering is necessitated by human free will. Perhaps suffering helps to develop a person's moral character, or maybe it's necessary to achieve some other end that God wishes to bring about. But intuitively, there appear to be instances of suffering that cannot serve any such end. People like this that I see talking about the death and suffering issue just don't get it that this is not the world as God made it. This world is suffering from our sin, and God judged this. He's a holy God, and he judges with death. In fact, we don't even deserve to exist. I mean, we deserve nothing because we and Adam sinned against a holy God. Is this not the world as God made it? Remember, Ken Ham believes that the story of Genesis is a literal account of actual historical events. Is God not responsible for creating the serpent that tempted Eve, causing sin to supposedly enter the world? That's not to absolve her of moral responsibility for violating God's commandment not to eat of the tree. But think about it. Ken is responding here to the problem of evil and suffering by saying that the world is not as God made it. So surely he means one of two things. He might mean that the world as God created it contained no evil, or he may mean that it contained no suffering, that these things only pervade the world because of Adam and Eve's sin. Well, if the world as God made it contained no evil, then how did it contain within it an evil, deceptive serpent? It seems to me like evil did exist in the Garden of Eden before any man ever sinned. Indeed, it must have, because otherwise there would have been no evil to tempt Eve, and thus no fall. Perhaps, then, Ken means that before the fall there was no suffering. But this doesn't seem right either. They don't understand the gospel, they don't understand our sin, what it's done to this world, and so they really don't understand what's going on here, and they again look at God and blame God for everything. The biggest problem for theism here is not, famously, the, the great intense sufferings of the world, like holocausts or earthquakes, but rather meaning, uh, menial, less significant suffering, like being caught out in the rain, or stubbing your toe, or tripping over a curb on the street. So Alex O'Connor goes on and says, you know, th there's something that's even more, in, in his opinion, uh, more difficult to explain, and that is why we would stub our toe and, and hurt our toe and so on. In other words, all the little things that happen day to day. But again, he doesn't understand we're living in a fallen world. This is not the world as God made it. You know, God holds everything together, but he's not holding everything together perfectly. And so now everything is falling apart and we're to blame. We're to blame for the fact that God isn't holding everything together perfectly. How do you figure that? It's our sin. See, people don't want to take responsibility for their sin. They don't want to acknowledge they're a sinner. They don't want to acknowledge they need a savior. And, and again, the interesting thing is they look at this world and they see all the death and suffering and disease and so on, and yet they attribute this world to evolutionary processes. And so what they're really saying is it's great that evolution did this. Uh, and then they turn around and say, but if, if God's responsible for this, how horrible God is. Think of the inconsistency even there. Um, Ken, the difference is that naturalists don't believe that the evolutionary process is a conscious agent that cares about the creatures it produces. You believe that God created the world, inserted within it an evil snake, knowing that he would be able to seduce Adam and Eve, and now punishes their descendants on account of their original sin. This must be reconciled with his supposed loving nature.